All set. All right. Well, uh, hello, everybody. This is Fitz Carmel Lamar, the art guy. So I have a special commission here uh, to hook up right on here live as we go. I have my reference. Uh, the special thing about this is this is a memorial painting for this uh, young man right here. I don't want to shoot his name out because this is a surprise. So if anybody spoils the surprise, we already know what kind of person we're dealing with here. All right. So let's be sensitive if you recognize these folks. Right. So let me get a little closer here. So you can kind of see what we're going to be doing. Um, the request of this piece was for me to put the father and his son together. He passed away about three years ago. And for his, I think he's going to be 10. Um, mom commissioned me to create this, basically this situation, just to help him always have a reminder of exactly what his dad looked like. And then we even got the tattoos in there, right? All these details. He had some kind of crazy looking shark on his arm, right? That that lotus type flower, that was really hard for me to, I had to focus on that one a bit. So here we go. I got the paint. I'm just going in black and white mainly. I'm just gonna go in with just some washes of the black. If you want, you can ask any kind of questions you want. Um, this is mainly just to be a little something different. Everything's been pretty political lately, but how's about we get into the fine arts, right? If I'm going to say I'm the Black Bob Ross, I might as well get it in. So here we go. Let's breathe. Oh. In. Out. Get out all that ooh. That ooh. That type of stuff. So I'm going to start off is with a nice little detail brush here. And wet it up. And I'm going right in. I have my reference off to the side. And what I was able to do, I'll kind of talk to you as you're going. If you have questions, I can also answer them probably at the end. I can't really, you know, I don't have a screen right in front of me yet. But I'm going to start with this black and getting that in there and just start working this all the way around. And I'm not going to likely finish the entire painting, but for the time we're here, for this hour we're here or so, uh, I'll be able to get most of this in, to be honest with you. So if you stick around, you can see a transformation. If you gotta go take a little potty break, I'll be here. And I just keep going in there. I use a little bit of water. Mainly I'm creating a wash right here, right? I don't wanna go in too dark just yet. Not everywhere. Up here with the hair, yeah, I can. But I just wanna be nice and careful so I can get the details blocked out, and then we get right in there. Right in, oh, there we go. Get more happening here. And so what I did, mom gave me assets is what we call them in the biz. And these are pictures of dad and son. And so what I did with my handy dandy Photoshop skills is I went ahead and put it together. Uh, anatomy is a big thing for me. If you uh, check out my Facebook page, you'll see I love portraits. That's my thing. So uh, compositing, I was able to create this situation that never existed. Um, so now we're going to have a great memorial piece when this is all done. This is going to be black and white when we're all done. And I use a grid method when I'm getting this in. So what I do is I plot out a grid. That's the same proportions. My reference is over here on the tablet. And then all I do is sketch everything out so I get the proportions nice and fast. There's some artists who will say, oh, that's kind of a cheating method, but it's accurate, it's quick, and I'm getting commissions, so I gotta pay the bills somehow real fast, real quick, so this is what I do. I could try to do it the other way, but eh, I wanna be faster. And you can try this method if you want and think it's going to look as good as it does. I'll commend you if it does, but it, it doesn't diminish the actual talent that goes into doing something. Most people who talk like that are all talk. I always challenge people when I was younger. Ooh, I love challenging people to art. 
contests of sorts. People would want to draw this, that, or the other, and that's where that's where it got real good. It was a lot of fun because it was all based in talent. So even to this day, I've kind of kept that with me, where there's a bit of competition. And here in New Bedford, there's a lot of competition. I know you guys don't look at it like that, but it's what makes me better. I have to look at it like that because ultimately it comes down to me getting some more commissions and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get paid and do uh, my thing. So I want, I want to be the best, 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 best. But don't worry. I share the wealth. Uh, I have this project, New Detroit, coming up. Some of you know about it. Graphic novel based here. Zombie apocalypse scenario type thing. And I'm going to be getting some artists in there. We're partnered with Third Eye. We're going to be launching a nice little program that involves the kids. We had a call out before. Everybody came. The prologue is out. Available on Amazon. Shameless plug. Um, you can go to New Bedford on Facebook and you will see some people you know if you start perusing through the page. The all call was mainly to get residents of New Bedford out and into the national parks. I was the artist in residence for the first run that they had. I was one of the last ones. I considered myself anchorman. And they let me do whatever I wanted to do. And I've had the idea concept brewing for New Bedford since 2015. But I didn't get a chance to really do anything with it until 2018. So it had been developing all that time. So my brain has been in apocalypse mode for a very long time. So with everything happening now, with quarantining six to eight feet away, yeah, I was already on that. <laughs> Plus, I have a little bit of a germ phobia. So I went to that protest last week. I'm still in quarantine, but I have a feeling. I mean, I feel okay. Um, but that's a week away, and I'm all right. But I think I'm just going to have them shove one of them sticks up my nose and take the test. Just to be sure, just to be safe. I want to be a responsible example. And what you do and how to do it responsibly. Because we, can, we can't change anything from our couches, we gotta get out. So we might as well get it going. So now I'm starting to get Dad's features in here. Dad has a huge smile, okay? Like, I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> when I was doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with like this dude's smile. Like, talk about an infectious smile, this guy does not care. He is smiling with all of his teeth. He's making sure you see them all. It is so nice. This dude just looks like a warm type guy. And then I love the smirk that the, the sun is going to, ah, it's going to be, this is going to be really good. So this is a pretty special piece to me too. I have a son, same age. So, ah, it's, uh, it's nice. Nice. So we're getting some more shading in here. All right. Getting dad's features going. Let's finish the side of his head on this side, right? A little bit more in there. Get in this ear. Pop around. All right. So this zombie apocalypse situation that uh, we had here, I was thinking, what is the New Bedford? Out of all the places I've lived, I've lived in. Miami, Florida, shout out to my Florida folks. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beaches, all those. Uh, and then I ended up moving to California. And then from California, uh, I ended up coming back here because I was originally born in Boston City Hospital. So of all the places I've ever been, even Los Angeles, New Bedford has the most characters by per capita. Per capita, it's amazing. I don't know if anybody remembers the guy who was a cowboy who used to be downtown. He was walking around with a dog off the leash. 
That dog was amazingly trained. But he still got tickets and stuff. Yeah, but he was a character. He was cool. And that was like when I, around when I first got here. But then I just kept meeting more and more characters. And I know nobody else would ever believe me, ever believe me that these are real people in a real place. And I said, what scenario could I throw everybody in, everybody in to showcase these characters? And then the idea started tooling around. I was like, alien invasion? Nah, that would be like, yeah. Uh, AI, like the Matrix? Nah. Now, I like zombies, love zombies. Because that's where we were because it was a survivalist thing. I don't know if anybody remembers those prepper shows and stuff, but I love all that kind of stuff. You got to be ready. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So we're getting dad's features in here. So the main focus of New Deadford is during the apocalypse. It's the third time. This will be the richest city in the world. The only way that this is possible is because we come together as a community. So I've been having community ideas and stuff like this for some time now. So now it seems like the universe has created a situation where I need, now need to apply these ideas that which is something I was having for a graphic novel to the real world. And that's also why I paused on doing the idea because during the pandemic, I thought it would be honestly kind of tasteless to be working on a concept called New Deadford while real people are out there still dying, as a matter of fact. All right, so we got the basics here on Dad's face. I'm going to go in and do some lighter shading. So that means I need to add way more water, way more water. I might not even use this glob of paint here just yet the white paint but let's see how dark this is okay need more water on that and now we're going to get some of these features on the face so all i'm going to start doing is i lay it down and i'm just dragging this around dragging this around just moving it all kinds of ways getting this there getting some more of this here Right, all right. Some more guys' features popping out. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. So, a little more water. Just because I like getting these light features in and then going a little darker here and there. Just a little darker here and there. Little tops here, little tops there. And I'm using this itty bitty brush. This is all I'm using, that and a little bit of water. And then we start dancing around in here. And getting all of these gums. This guy is smiling. That's a smile from the heart right there. Just so you know. Let's, let's, let, me, let, me, let me let you get a good look at that. Let me get, let you get a good look at somebody smiling from the heart. That's a, that's a warm smile. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. All right. Straighten this out a little bit. And then let me grab some water again. And we're going to get right back in. Right back in. And then I'm going to go here and get some more features. Now I'm going to go hit the kid up now because I'm kind of I'm feeling okay with this. I don't have to really mess with this too, too much more. I kind of know dad's likeness is locked in. Now, once I get, once I get the little guy's face in here, oh man, this thing is going to start going quick. Now, I was talking that mess before, but these tattoos took a, took me for a loop because being accurate with those, that's like me reproducing somebody else's art in my art project here. So that so kind of could throw you for a loop to a degree, but and it did. It did. It took me a little longer than I anticipated. I wanted to go live with this yesterday, but this this portion wasn't ready. So I ended up uh, in the composite taking the picture 
of uh, the sun, cutting him out. Do, 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 do. And then I kind of know anatomy, placed an arm in, dropped the tattoo from the references, and then composited all of this together. So it's kind of, I call it Frankensteining something, where I just kind of put all the stuff together and then go to town from there. Because now we have an entire composition that makes it look like this picture was taken. And then I get to paint it. And then it's completely custom now. Completely custom. And so, yep, yep, you guessed it. I do take commissions of all kinds. I got a list going right now. If you want, you can throw your name down there and or asking how much. I think I got a friend in there who will direct you. <laughs> Shakira Gonzalez helps out a lot with stuff like that. Thank you. Shout out to Shakira Gonzalez. But uh, I want to throw this out there, everybody. Uh, how would you like to see other artists on here doing something or me talking to other artists? Um, I've been given the opportunity to possibly talk about what we want uh, as artists on the show. We can talk about your projects, equity, exposure, anything you'd like. Uh, I know I'd like to bring up subjects, but I don't want to be that only guy who's saying stuff. And even if it's just promoting art, I mean, I really, I believe in Black Lives Matter, of course, being a black life, that would be kind of weird. But I also want to show why our lives matter as well, where there's all this beauty that we can create and that we do create. So maybe it's going to humanize us just a little bit more to somebody, just a little bit more. That's all I want them to see. Accountability, some compassion. That's all we're talking about. Just getting a little bit of that. If you feel like a protester is inconveniencing you so much that you could run them over with a car, then that kind of shows the value you have on that person's life. Your inconvenience is worth more and a person's safety doesn't sound quite right to me. I mean, that's, that, that might just be me. But maybe those are the same people who would hit a dog and just keep driving. They wouldn't try to find the owner. They'd just get home, wash the blood off, go to bed. But these days, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna pay off for us to try to be more compassionate. Look at the beautiful things in the world. There's plenty of them. There's some evil in the world, too. And we have to pay attention to that, too. We can't just ignore it. I did. I'm not going to act like I was always out there doing stuff. I felt it was hopeless. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's what I live with. Not to have an aside too far. But now I feel like there is hope. It's the only reason I'm stepping up. So I feel like there's hope. I feel like there's something that can be done. Tangible results. That's going to be my new hashtag out there. That's what, we, that's what we need. Tangible results. Things we can measure to show everybody, hey, this is how it is. Some accountability. Ooh, look at that eye coming through. Coming through. All right. Getting, getting that. Kids' eyes are just so like expressive to me. Love it. I love it. Can't even pick what I like. Anytime I'm painting something, there's portions of it that I end up just loving. Just loving. And this guy's smile and this kid's smirk. Oh, man. The mom gave me a challenge by throwing in all these tattoos and everything. She knows she could have had me just have a shirt on or something. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just joking. I love the specificity of this. I love the idea that I'm able to almost like channel, take this image and create something that was never there. This was never there. This didn't exist. This was just in her mind. And then luckily, I was blessed with an ability to be able to see those types of things. 
Some people say something, sketch out a little something, talk to them a little longer. It's almost like mind reading. You can see it. It's creativity. It's right there. It's a stream. And we can all, I feel like anybody can do this. I've just been doing it <laughs> for some time. Well, no, I've only been painting uh, about six and a half years. I used to pencil, do all this kind of sketch. The painting, it's going to be six and a half years or so. So I'm an older dude. You can do, you can do some stuff. You can polish yourself off, figure out what you want to be whenever, and do what you want to do. I'm almost a full-time artist. Almost, almost, almost. I work with the Pequod crew, with Whale in the community, restoring old homes, doing all that drywall work and stuff like that, patching holes, preserving some history in the city. I uh, work with a lot of different partners, homeschool community, stuff like that. So I get around with this creative stuff. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. So other artists out there, if you're interested in, you know, doing a little something, something like this, I know uh, many people probably aren't fond of this platform necessarily due to, uh, you know, other views that have been shown on here. but. I mean, if you're going to have objective content, that's kind of what you got to do. You got to deal with some stuff you don't even want to hear. I know some, my, I think my sister said she almost unsubscribed, but I'm here. So there's another angle here as well. So as long as we're using it for something, let's use it for something. We have to use the voice. Not everybody can, or I'm not going to speak for everybody. I mean, I kind of can, but. It'd be nice if we had all these other voices up here, too. You know how much talent is out there? I'd like to see uh, Cavallo up here talking about his stuff. Oh, I love Allison Wells. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Allison Wells would be great. Do a little profile on the gallery and everything. Yeah, yeah. So much culture and art. And everything going on around here, there's so much that we can highlight. If we're given a platform to do it, even if you don't like necessarily what goes on from 12 to 1 and 7 to 9 and all those other hours, if you're given an opportunity, you might as well take it. Not quite sure if uh, everybody watching knows I had a conversation with Chief Cadero, but... I wasn't quite ready for that, but I made myself ready for that. I knew somebody had to have a conversation that, and I'm just a concerned citizen. I'm just somebody who wants their voice heard. But I know here, you can get your voice heard. And this is one way, look at me, I'm just sitting here painting, showing everybody some something else. Something from the heart, something beautiful. Look at that. Look at this kid's face. Oh, man. Let me get a little more water here. And now, because our kid here has some softer features, I can't really go, you know, too nutty. I got a, this little spray bottle I also use, right? That way it helps me keep this stuff nice and saturated. And I can keep keep it going. All right. Got some more shading going on here. Lighten stuff up. All right. So I'm kind of comfy with where I am here. So let's rock and roll and get some more of this stuff. Like knocked in, right? Because you guys might be getting bored and nodding off or doing whatever, but hey, here we go. So this is uh, another request. Was this, I thought it was a nice touch, this Kobe jersey. It's just a hair. And then I'm going to fade this in. So it's going to be that Lakers 24. And this is different shades are going to be in here, but all I need is 
this Lakers here, and then we're gold. We are gold. So now, right now, oops, a little more water. That's too dark for that area for now. So I'm going to take that and spread that here and spread that here and spread that here. And that way, now I can move it out in a little bit, but little by little, little by little, I'm adding the shadows, right? Just letting it peek in. You'll see it soon. You'll see it soon. I'm using the dark where the dark is, and I'm trying to avoid outlining. Because there's not too many real outlines in real life. Not too many. Most things have shading and gradation to them. I also do offer private lessons. Uh, I'm doing private lessons with uh, one of my childhood friend's daughter. And we are doing phenomenal. Shout out to Didi, Lazarus Collins' daughter. She's doing amazing. Her attention span by the week exponentially gets better. She's doing high school level work. And she's only, I think, nine years old, maybe 10. I recall her being around my son's age as well. So I'm probably going to switch the brush because this one now is kind of getting a little small for me. And I want to start, but I want to get these details in here too. So I'm a little, little torn, but we'll work it out. We'll work it out. More shading around this thumb here. And then the shadow starts coming down. All right. So I'm going to pull this back a little more, get a little more of this light. Shading on our boy's neck. All right. Oh, I don't know if I finished my statement. If any artists are interested, go ahead and, you know, throw your name down there. Well, I'll get in contact with you and we'll work something out. Ask you a few questions. Let's see what you're doing. It don't have to be anything political. It can just be what you're doing. You want to do a little painting? Let's do it. You got to use some outlets. Clog them up. Maybe if we got enough content, we got enough content. And that's a louder voice. I'm sure everybody has a story. That's definitely going back to that new dead fruit thing of mine. That's definitely a part of it. Or I should say of ours. We're going to be having an open call pretty soon again, but we're going to, I got to figure out the the format to doing it online so everybody can submit their pictures for the next chapter that's coming up or chapters because I'm trying to hire some more artists to get this project done a little quicker because there's 10 different chapters uh, Mike Sylvia is uh, going to be interviewing me on that stuff too so uh I appreciate the support. Appreciate the support. So here we go. I'm going to go in. Leave that alone because I'm going to just darken that up if I keep going for it. And a little water. Fading this out. So now my buddy here is almost there. So what I'm going to start doing is getting in on dad's arm. Tap. So when I'm trying to paint, I usually try to work. It's kind of like the same way we read um, because I don't want my arm to rub over on different things. Uh, once I get to adding more of the, the grays and those values in there, I'll have to prop this up because if I keep it down, there's a tendency for the illusion to uh, throw off what I'm painting. So I want to look at it more pretty much the way it's going to be viewed. So let's get this negative spot. So our boy's shoulders popping through. And the reference that I have, I made the dad's shirt like black, but it's not going to be that dark. But this is mainly to outline and get our boy here nice and framed. And we get some of this going. And if you know any other artists, let them know. Hey, there's a chance uh, if you want it, 
you can get on there and do a little painting something. You can share this video with them right now. Let them know, hey, I bet you could do that. Because a lot of artists, I think, just need to know that there's spaces out there that you can do stuff. Hey, I didn't know that this was a possibility until a couple days ago, really. <laughs> so right on, here we are. And then, you know, we can do a whole little New Bedford variety show. Welcome to New Bedford. It's a place where all the art and food is great. That's New Bedford. I just made that. Uh, so I can't, I don't know any more lyrics. <laughs> anyway, we could do something like that. You know what I mean? Like we can cut to this and that and have, have a voice. We can do some stuff together. Because that's the only way you survive. All those zombie apocalypse shows, they're in those groups. And the only way to really do it is with the community. So I, you know, I know that. So why not show that example? And so that's what I plan on as being, at least in my story. But I think we could be that in real life too. Find the uh, the the synchronicity of the timing pretty nutty, if you ask me. For when everything started for New Deadford, and then all of a sudden, a real virus is taking things over. Nobody's turning into zombies yet, so. You know, just don't come knocking down my door when that happens. <laughs> that does. I'm going underground, folks. You ain't seeing me no more. Because you know, they might, might come after me a little too hard. All right. Get that right in there. Mm hmm. All right. We're about reaching the halfway point, and then I'm seeing we are. I might be able to get some of this white paint on here a bit more. But I'm gonna zoom this in or pick this canvas up so you can kind of see different parts a little closer once I get that Lakers in there. Cause then this guy, we are hustling right along. It's gonna look really good. So we're dealing with all these extra values that we're gonna be knocking out with the white but right now, I'm trying to lay in all the dark colors because even when I go back to paint with the white, it's going to take a few times, a few passes, almost like that's why you got to prime certain areas. But I use that to my advantage with acrylic paint because I actually like that it dries fast because I can get a lot more done. But one day, maybe one day, I'll switch to oil or dabble with the oil paint. If there's anybody who knows any cool tutorials or anything on oil painting and stuff, let me know. But from what I hear with all the solvents, it can be uh, an expensive habit. That's the main reason I was painting so late. I always thought it was like expensive. But then when I moved here, I, was, I wanted to be a traditional artist. So I got a gig with Michaels. I found it on Craigslist where they had teacher's classes that, where you could be a teacher. And so I jumped in on that for the free paint. That's the main reason I did it. I wanted free paint. And so that's where I got some of these tubes that are still good to this day. These are old tubes. They're Grumbacher, though. Shout out to Grumbacher if you're saying, I'll let your boy, I'll be your spokesperson. Grumbacher, Grumbacher. So these tubes are like, nobody paid me <laughs> some of the best paint I've used. I'm not sure how expensive they are, because once again, I got them for free. <coughs> so, it's getting COVID. Like, yeah, man, maybe you should get that test. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. Better safe than sorry. A friend of mine in Cali kind of inspired me in that direction because he went to a protest and he got tested. And so I was like, oh, wow, I should I should do the same thing. Because then, you know, I'd know if all of this 
quarantining is really the real deal. Because there are things I would like to do in the community. Because I'm a community kind of guy like that. I like getting out there. I'm a people person. Although, don't get me wrong, the beginning of this quarantine, I got to paint, paint, and paint and saw and, and watch myself exponentially get better. Exponentially. I'll throw some, uh, just to give you an idea, I'll go grab one and kind of put it under the camera so you can take a look at a couple of the things. Hey, I'll put my finger right in there. <laughs> That's what she said. All right, so I'm um, gonna get this here and get the S. And Lakers. So I'm gonna pick this up, show it to you, show you some other stuff, and then get back to it. All right. So I'll sit to the side. So so far, so good. Look at that. And this is not even really anywhere near done. This is just kind of the plotting out. Oops. Plotting out of a lot of the stuff I have there. So once I go in with the white, I'm able to start creating a little more depth because it's not until, in my opinion, that the paint starts getting right in there and right on there and layering and layering and layering that you get the effect that you're looking for. Especially with blending. So during the apocalypse in the beginning, this is show enough, as some of y'all may know from The Last Dragon. So it's one of the movies I had been watching. Yeah, we'll go that right. Yeah, and I can see it a little better. Um, so this one, he's not quite done because I got some details. And there, but he's going to be for sale too. But this one was just for the heck of it because we were all cooped up. So I figured might as well paint something I like and get going. Uh, one of the ones I didn't quite get to finish, but I will finish, is Bruce Leroy. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't have all that without another one that didn't quite finish because then things kind of picked up with these commissions with the struggle. And there we are. And then, ooh, 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 I got this other one over here. So I almost did a little spinoff idea. Or it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. This is a cosplay person that I saw online a whole storyline was inspired. It's going to be called Black America. Black spelled with a Q. U. So she's going to be from an alternate timeline, universe type thing. And I'm going to take other cosplay characters and people's other types of art and stuff like that and make a whole cool cast. And they're gonna have a whole deep adventure. But hey, let's get back to this guy right here. With these guys, righty. Let's put that down, make sure that's there. All right, let's jump back in. Here we go, here we go. So what are we doing? We're gonna lighten up. Nope, not lighten up. We're gonna darken up in here. And get a little more of that, some separation on our voice chain. Gotta make sure the bling is catching. And then we got that stripe there on the jersey that's going to be in there. So we got to start highlighting some details to pop out some more stuff because he didn't have this jersey on either. That's another Photoshopped thing in there. He just had on his regular game jersey. So we're going to get a few more details in here. I think I got it. I gotta give it a spritz, y'all. I gotta give it a spritz. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, that's gonna help me get around a bit more. So I'm also a self-taught artist. I did go to school for graphic design. 
but all this paint stuff and whatnot, as long as I have it and I have time with it, I feel like I can do it. So that's kind of what happened. So six and a half years ago, I moved from, or seven years ago, will be seven years that I've been here, but I didn't really start painting or figuring that whole thing out for about six months. And then I did this series, Ambassadors of Peace, with Bob Marley, Gandhi, and I have, I have three of them behind me. Mother Teresa, MLK is at the uh, YMCA in uh, Fall River. Uh, and Kennedy is, uh, <laughs> if, ever, if anybody uh, knows uh, Jocia Correa, <laughs> the uh, mayor of, or I think former mayor, uh, Fall River, he's the one who at an auction bought that painting. And some money went to the schools, or most of the money went to the school. So uh, I got a little, you know, something, something. But it was hanging up there. So that was pretty dope. Uh, I think so. The art gets around. I still got Mother Teresa and Gandhi here for sale. But we'll get to that someday. I'll probably oh I'll post some pictures of them. How's that in the comments when I'm a bit more done here? And now we're gonna get more of that shirt going. Some of the darker features. Right, right, okay. I bring my water back up here because it's back and forth with it that way isn't really happening. Working out for me so well. So he's gonna show a little light through. And then we get some more of these details with the shading on the shirt. Create some separation using the shading between our boy's neck, his jersey. Yeah, there we go. So once I get to go really dark and really light on here, then the depth really kicks in. Right now, this is all likeness. This is likeness and still pretty 2D looking to me. I like things to go into a 3D portion. So, uh, or a look, I should say. I have this other painting I did, which uh, shameless plug is also for sale. Um, this Beyonce. And this has lovely gold leaf placed delicately, delicately on her rose crown. Notice the bee. Ooh. So Beyonce is for sale. If you like her, you can DM me for some pricing. But this is the contrast that I'm talking about, where you get a lot more depth in it. Uh, you can see kind of the different stages we're at. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of this into that when the time comes. Would somebody let Beyonce know that exists? Because, I mean, somebody got to know. I just wanted to know it was here. Give me, a, give me a little credit. Something, something. I don't want no handout. I just want somebody to know what I do. That's about it. You can let the queen be know. I'm going to put my plate here. All right. So I think I'm going to have to move up to a bigger brush. I do. No, you know what? Let's hang out here in these details and this tattoo. And start getting around here and just getting a lot of this legwork. So here, because the actual tattoo has an outline, this is making life easy for me because I can actually outline something. The outlines are pretty easy. It's the shading and the blending that can tend to make things a little more tricky. And there'll be plenty of that that I'll be getting to, but I doubt I'll be doing all of that on camera because then I have to sit it on my lap and I have to move the painting around in different ways so I can continually get different views. I use a mirror. I'll turn it upside down. Uh, I use all kinds of little tricks and tabs to make sure to check my work. It's like a math problem to me. That's why the grid kind of works it out. Uh, and I use this on an educational platform as well because all my brain is doing right now is plotting out points on a graph 
Oh, the kids didn't know they were learning something today. Da -da 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 -da. You too. All right, so we're going to get a little bit more features in these tats. So by the time this is done, your eye is going to be moving all over this thing because this one at the bottom is no joke. Because um, that smile and his smirk are going to keep you up here. But then by the time you're going to take that trip down to view the rest of this painting, you're going to be you're going to be getting locked in down there, too. Especially if you know them. That's the cool part. Um, so shout out to mom for hooking up her baby boy or her boy. I'm not sure if it's her baby boy. I'll take that back. Uh, Carrie Brito. I think she said I could say her name uh, just before I went on. So Carrie, shout out to you being super mom. Uh, I am definitely honored to be a part of hooking this up because this has been a pleasure to do. To actually work on a project and use all these different skills. Going back to the whole competition thing, I like challenge because I tend to be my biggest critic, just like most artists. But I enjoy the challenge. That's why I like portraits. That's why I like, you know, I could do animals. I could do landscapes, all that stuff. But you, you got a little wiggle room with those other uh, types of things. Yeah, there's really no wiggle room. If I don't make his face look like his face, it doesn't look like his face. So I don't want anybody going out there saying uh, there's no mistakes in art. It depends on, you know, what you're doing. Because I bet Carrie wouldn't be too happy if this didn't look like them. But quite the opposite now, because it looks like them, she loves them. And you ain't seen nothing yet, mommy. You ain't seen nothing yet. I got this one. All right, so we're getting it in. Getting more of these details, dad's arm. Once the white gets in here, oh man, this thing is gonna really be knocking. I might do this again, uh, or at least just show you where it is. This is. I'm on a pretty tight deadline, and I have no memory on my phone now. I gotta switch stuff out. Um, I guess I'm too loud for the neighbors. <laughs> no, they're doing construction. All right, so getting these skulls in that are on the wrist. Getting these little flames in here. There's all kinds of little details. That's the main reason I haven't switched the brush yet. So I want to get a little bit further, and then I won't hold everybody up. We'll close out. I kind of wanted to stay about within the hour range, and I think we still got a little bit of time. Uh, and I wasn't sure, you know, I want to get to any questions or anything out there. Um, just in case you got them. So remember, if you got any buddies out there doing the art thing, they can be doing this too. Get your voice out there. Get some content of your own on here. Uh, we can do a little talky talk, and then it's all you. Uh, you can kind of do your thing, or, and uh, trust me, there are plenty of you I have plenty of questions for. Um, but we're getting there now, right, right, right. All right, so then we're going to start working on dad's lower hand here. And getting more of the shading, contrast. I'm mainly going for everything that's dark. Just to make sure that even if I paint over it with some of the white, that it doesn't matter. I'll still be able to see through. And the white paint serves kind of like an eraser. But in this case, I like blending more than anything. So oftentimes I'll put something there knowing that the lighter version of it's gonna look better. And then I'll just paint right on top of it. So I am getting close to there. I will need the spritz. There we go. 
All right, get these little rays of sunshine shining down on me. Uh -huh. So we get a little bit more on here. And then, you know, this isn't all I do. Uh, I cook too, you know, you can, you can take a, take a peruse on a brother's page. You'll see, you'll see. I'm not just talking and talk. I walk the walk, do a little cooking. I might sing every now and again. I might, I might, I don't know. I don't think y'all really want me to do that too much. The cooking seems to be kind of popular, but we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, hit me with any friend requests too. I'm a friendly guy. You know, lately I've been getting those fake ass ones. So I'm sorry uh, if I don't respond to them right away because uh, I, I do actually check them now because uh, I've been getting these really weird fake ones and they're kind of obviously fake. <laughs> so uh, that's usually, you know, it just takes me a little time to get back to answering. You got any questions about anything? Hit me up, definitely. Um, this is not going to be the last time I'm going to be on here, that's for sure. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see me paint, uh, I, I have a giraffe over here <laughs> that if I didn't get Carrie's permission, that's what you would have been watching me paint. So uh, there's plenty of stuff. I would like to be on here doing some New Deadford paintings and such and introducing the artists that I'm going to have. Um, I need to, I'm gonna be in contact with our sister school, the all girls school here in the beige and be doing a project with them. So that's kind of breaking news uh, sort of thing uh, where it's gonna be a virtual program where the kids are going to help create a portion of the book. And then so uh, they are gonna be teamed up with artists from New Bedford, of course, and then we're all going to work on this project, story, creative writing, all kinds of good details. And then getting these kids published. Originally, before everything hit the fan, it was to be to get them to know how to use a local library. Uh, the New Bedford Art Museum has a great, great, great computer lab um, that I'm even working on them on a project to get that open because you can remote in. So even if you don't have Photoshop uh, or any of the creative suite, you can log in and be able to do that. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to really focus on that the way I need to, but I will be very soon. And that's there's going to be a scanning station that we're going to possibly have in there. And just so if you want to be a creative person in the city and utilize city functions and facilities as a resource, uh, we have them here and the national park as well there's uh 3d printers and we have all kinds of stuff here but if you don't know it's here it's kind of hard to look for something you don't know is here so there's a uh, plenty of resources and we're going to be switching the program virtual and so that's going to give kids at least an outlet they can do some stuff virtually with the library uh, and then they'll possibly be able to do the same remoting in as well. So it's just a matter of thinking outside the box to get what you need done. Because uh, just because I slowed down or paused on New Deadford doesn't mean it's not going to be coming back pretty strong. I promise you. I'm just making sure that I'm going to produce a product that we can all be proud of. This is a community inclusion project. This is something that anybody can get in on. Uh, if you're, even if you don't live in New Bedford, my friend Roz, uh, she lives in Fall River. And she, she's one of my main zombies, but her story is pretty cool because she's a cancer survivor. Um, and Roz is, as I say, certain people are in this world hard to kill. Life throws things at you, left and right, real things. And if you're still standing, you're just hard to kill. There's nothing, nothing but yourself that can defeat yourself. You're one of those people. So that's what Roz is to me. She's like a little hero. She doesn't know it. But I love Roz to death. 
and she's one of my good friends out here. <laughs> she has an acquired taste, I warn you. <laughs> but she's great. She's great. Roz Originals, look her up on Facebook. She's cool too. Um, and happy birthday to Doodles, by the way. Um, they've been doing a lot in the community with the kids and keeping them occupied. They gave away a bunch of art kits just yesterday for their birthday. They had a, a really cool event. I uh, wish I had known about it sooner. I could have, I, I definitely promote that. But if anybody wants anything pro promoted too, you know, you can hit me up. I don't mind people tagging creative art stuff on my page or anything like that. I'm not one of those, you know, oh, don't tag me, please, kind of people. If it's relevant, cool. If it's not, I knock it off and then, you know, we keep it moving. Um, but if it's about promoting business in New Bedford, let's do it. Let's get down. Let's work together. So it's a collaboration. I'm about to create something that's going to show us doing it. So we might as well do it in real life too, right? Get in there. Oh, we. I kind of like this idea of talking and working on this stuff because it kind of puts my mind into almost like meditative kind of place where I didn't even know that much of that flower was done while I was talking my nonsense to you guys here. Man. Well, look at that. This part is almost done. So once I get all of this black in here, we'll sign off. Don't worry, I'm not gonna paint the whole thing, but that was an idea that I'm gonna have one day as a marathon kind of thing where I just paint for a cause. And remember, remember those telephones back in the day? What happened to that? We should do something like that. Where we can raise money to get body cams for the officers. Because it's a money issue, the officers don't mind. By getting somebody to pay the storage fees, because the, the footage needs to be stored for seven years. So this is where the problem lies. All of that footage, consider it, consider it. Think about all that footage, all those stops, stuff that's probably not even that big of a deal, but it's still footage. Terabytes upon terabytes or whatever is larger than a terabyte these days of information needs to be stored. It's already a large volume and it has to be stored for seven years. So that's our issue. We can create some, there's a petition out there now you can sign it. It's a real thing. It holds everybody accountable, not just the police. So we can get that going. They're down. I'm working on it. You know, Michael Jordan just put out, I think he said $11 million to help end brutality. I mean, if y'all could just mobilize, I'm down. I'm planning on hollering at him. You can look at me like I'm crazy. But if y'all hear about me getting Michael Jordan out here paying for our body cams, you owe me a drink. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, he has some details under here. Look at that. I did all of that with that one brush. I did not think I was going to do that. These are signatures of or his daughter's names on there. I think that's Kayla and Anna is down here. Oh, I'm glad I said that because I only did part of Anna's name. There we go. Anna. I was wondering why. I thought I made a mistake and that's why I glanced over it, but this is the script of the letter here. There we go. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Anna. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're reaching that time, happy people, where I'm going to have to go. But before I leave, this will not be the last time you see me. Um, and I would like to see some more folks out here. I'd like to talk to some more folks. And I look forward to using this uh, medium as uh, 
something to showcase not only art but some music or whatever else we can start thinking outside the box and using this for what we can and a little more shading i need a little more now i'm trying to frame my boy's arm and dad's hand right here by using this darker portion all right You know what? I'm going to do that down here too. So I'm going to stop right here. Everybody gets a nice look. We're on our way. I have, I, I have more time. I have more time. I'm going to get it there. But right now, I am actually very happy where we are with this, guys. This is pretty dope. Thank you for tuning in. I'd like to thank everybody who took some time out to check out something different. Just uh, being creative out here. Um, you're more than welcome to join me, jump in. Any questions, comments, concerns, please check out New Deadford uh, on Facebook. It's available on Amazon. Uh, I take commissions. You got something you want me to do, just have some patience. I can't get around. I'll uh, shoot you the information on that one. Um, and if you have any uh, comments or concerns or you want to ask me questions about getting on and doing your own thing, you can hit me up or you can go directly to the New Bedford Guide. Uh, thank you very much and have a wonderfully blessed night. Goodbye. <laughs>